Red Yeast Rice Extract. Many years have passed since the introduction of this one particular nutraceutical, which many studies have been done since then, henceforth the meta-analysis. And as well too, many biases have subsided, which lead you and I to reviewing some quite spectacular outcomes in regard to the benefits of red yeast rice itself. Now, a few heads up as we go into the study. Often in many of the studies, instead of looking at red yeast rice extract as a whole, they will work with the extract ingredient itself called monocolon K. And then where they don't use monocolon K, often they'll use red yeast rice extract and you'll see the dosaging, let's say for example, about 1200 milligrams on a daily basis. However, without further ado, let's get right into the research because you're gonna find the results quite stunning. Actually, well, stunning, beautiful, amazing, however you wanna word it, it's pretty incredible, just the same. So let's get right into it as follows. Safety and efficacy of the consumption of the nutraceutical red yeast rice extract for the reduction of hypercholesterolemia in humans, a systematic review and meta-analysis. The present meta-analysis, now let's kind of cherry pick some of the information in regard to the study itself. So I'll pull it out of the paragraph for the sake of efficacy in conserving your time. The present meta-analysis comprising data from 14 clinical trials found statistically significant effects of red yeast rice extract consumption on the reduction in total and LDL cholesterol. The reduction in total cholesterol levels ranged between 11.2 to 19.2%. This is where I'm gonna skip ahead. Likewise, proportion of the reduction in LDL-C levels range from 14.3 to 22.17%. Regarding triglyceride levels, kind of mixed, but in the studies which showed benefit, 5 to 16.3% decrease. With regard to the safety of red yeast rice extract, the present systematic review provides evidence that the consumption of red yeast rice extract, you know, it's RYR, may be considered a safe choice with neither life-threatening nor frequent adverse events. The present systematic review and meta-analysis found mean levels of reduction in LDLC levels comparable to those of low-dose statins, which are more commonly used in the treatment of hypercholesterolemia, specifically prevastatin, simvastin, simvastatin, fluvastatin, and lovastatin, and in an average of 20% reduction in the LDLC levels itself. So the researchers looking at the meta-analysis are alluding to comparable results to those particular dosages of those other types of statins. To proceed, the secondary prevention hypothesis is further supported by a recent meta-analysis which aimed to examine the long-term effect of red yeast rice extract consumption on the incidence of myocardial infarction. The study found that red yeast rice extract consumption, about 1200 milligrams a day, as we discussed, was associated with a reduced risk of myocardial infarction and sudden death. In contrast, HDLC levels were significantly increased. Therefore, based on these data, it seems that red yeast rice extract may be associated with positive long-term cardiovascular effects. Now to proceed, again, pay attention to the monocolon K, but let's start. Another meta-analysis comprised of 53 randomized clinical trials and primarily assessed the incidence of musculoskeletal disorders, whereas secondary outcomes included non-musculoskeletal symptoms and serious life events. In agreement with the findings of the present review, so the comparison, comparing, the use of red yeast rice extract was not associated with an increased risk of musculoskeletal disorders. In fact, in contrast, red yeast rice extract consumption was associated with the, with the reduced risk, to reiterate, with a reduced risk 
of musculoskeletal side effects and serious complications compared to controls or control groups. Therefore, red yeast rice extract may be considered an effective and safe food drug at the recommended dosages that are available for the treatment of hypercholesterolemia. To date, the general recommendation is that red yeast rice extract preparation should contain the component, as you and I alluded to in the beginning, monocolon K, in a dose of 3 to 10 milligrams for the treatment of hypercholesterolemia for the medical professionals out there. Now, the reason I wanted to point out the monocolon K is as we look at the studies included for this particular meta-analysis, as you can see the length of time of each study, and you'll often see the dosaging was based more upon that one particular active ingredient, monocolon K, as opposed to red yeast rice extract as a whole. To conclude, I'm going to leave that study up there real fast so you get an opportunity to look at it. Now, to conclude, the consumption of red yeast rice extract by people with hypercholesterolemia was associated with statistically significant reductions in total cholesterol and low-density lipoprotein cholesterol without an increased risk of life-threatening side effects. Further research on specific subpopulations and outcomes could establish a consensus on determining the clinical benefits of red yeast rice extract consumption. So that's a pretty amazing journey in regard to red yeast rice itself. I don't know if many of you remember when red yeast rice extract first came out. There are questions. And again, there were also biases. However, now the time has passed and the dust has settled. It is beginning to show an incredible, incredible, promising future. Did you see the reduction in the mucoskeletal disorders uh, in regard to the consumption that they alluded to in the study itself? I'm trying not to add publisher bias. That's pretty spectacular. If someone's actually looking to potentially lower cholesterol and avoid those particular side effects, that's a, like a win-win. But again, that's the outcome that these researchers concluded and may need to be confirmed in future research just to play it safe, a caveat. But regardless, gratitude to the researchers. I am humble you watch and look forward to see what you and I share next week. Catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.